as the lights are out and away we go. And it looks like Sam Bird's got a pretty decent start, but Loic Duval has got the inside line going into Santa Bot. And he's also slightly ahead, he actually shoves us into the wall there. There you go. Anyway, so here's what forced, uh, forced the safety car to come out. So that's Nico Prost, and what on earth has happened there? I can't even describe what's happened. I mean, he clipped the wall coming into the swimming pool section. And as you can see, coming into the pits, to cost obviously to replace his front wing. And the race is back underway. Well, there's the green flag. And the, for some reason, the second the green flag comes out, Duval breaks. Villeneuve's going to try and make a move on to Grassi. Um, coming out of Raskas, he nearly did it. And going into Anthony Nogues, he's lost his front wing as well. So they're still out, but they will have to come into the pits again. So this is the front three, but they're coming into the pits again. And what on earth has Bruno Senna done? Bruno Senna's just retired, and so is Daniel App there. There's Jean-Luc Verne, he's going to score some good points for DS Virgin Racing at the moment. And what on earth has he done? He has rolled it, and he's gone into some spectators. Jean-Luc Verne has wiped out some spectators. He's upside down. He's out of the race. He's made the same mistake as everyone else at the swimming pool chicane. And we should just see that we're just following with Degrassi at this point. We should just see his yellow flags here. And Degrassi has made the same mistake. Duval tries to go through. And Degrassi drives out in front of Loret Duval. And it's going to be a Venturi 1-2 at Monaco. The Monaco-based team has taken a 1-2. Villeneuve in first. Sarazan second. Nathaniel Burton. The only person to stay out of chaos this race. Aside from ourselves. He comes in third. Because everyone crashed, we got 4th place, the last finisher, so we've had just as many finishers in this race as we did at the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix. Right, okay, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for part 8 in this Formula E series on Formula 1 tracks. And after the, the ridiculous Monaco E Prix, we're here at Belgium, spa franco uh, which hopefully can produce a more normal race actually a clean race um i don't know why we're glitching out in the bottom right corner something wrong with the garages in this uh, in this mod i mean this is the twin uh, this is the wcp 2015 mod of spa i i, I don't know why i chose the 2015 layout of spa because obviously spa's changed a lot over the years um and i went for the 2015 layout with this bus stop chicane just because uh, just because why not really um but anyway yeah we do actually make a hash of the bus stop chicane, really not taking that cleanly. Well, we take it cleanly, but not uh, efficiently. Anyway, the run up to the line, Nico Prost is the quickest at the moment, and we set a 28 2, which is slower than Nico Prost, but you know, um, you know, it was a decent lap. I mean, the bus stop chicane was pretty poor, but you know, aside from that, not too poor of a lap. And there's only going to be nine laps in the race because the lap is so long. I mean, a two and a half, uh, yeah, two and a half minute lap. Anyway, Nico Prost ended the session on pole position, D'Ambrosio second. Uh, championship rivals, you know, Verne is in 6th, Sarazan 10th, PK Jr. down in 14th, so it's good our championship rivals aren't starting too high up, which is good because I qualified in last once again. Um, there seems to be a thing with this series, the AI are ridiculously overpowered in qualifying, it seems to vary track by track, sometimes they're not, but more often than, more often than not, the AI are ridiculously overpowered in qualifying, I have no idea what that's all about. But anyway, on the grid at Spa for the 2016 Belgian e the lights are out and away we go. And, and more smoke at the back of the grid, as per usual, generated by myself. Nico Pross, he's got off to a good start. He's still holding the lead. We can't see him anymore, though, as we dive it up the inside of the source. Getting past a few cars, I think we got past PK Jr., which is good, because he's a championship rival. Loads of cars running out wide, including Nico Pross, as we try and get past Sarazan. So, actually... If you look at our start compared to our championship rivals, things have got you know things have gone well. We got past PK, we got past Sarazan, Duval's you know there's only me, there's only Burton separating us and Duval and Frines has cut the corner. Sarazan has got past fairly, but Robin Frines cutting the you know the top of Eau Rouge. I've no idea what that's all about. I mean Frines, you know I used to feel sorry for you when uh, when you weren't scoring points, but you can't just cut corners like that. And we could try and think about making a move, but we just can't. There's not the space. We would have made the move, but Sarazan was thinking about making the move on Frines. And, you know, if I tried to dive it up the inside of someone who's trying to dive it up the inside of someone, there would have just been a massive crash. You can't go free wide, um, really, you know, into a corner. But anyway, yeah, we get we go round to the outside of Sarazan, and Frines, Frines got a really poor run at the exit of that, and going round the corner with no name, we're right up behind our teammate. And make no mistake, uh, Jean-Eric Verne, 
he is a championship rival. He's lost a couple of places off the start. And now going into, I believe this is Puon. And, jeez, Duval going really slowly there. We just breezed right past Duval and John Eric Verne. We're in seventh place right up behind Nathaniel Burton. And, actually, both it's both Team Aguri cars that are directly ahead of us. Um, so, yeah, really. And coming out of the exit of Puon, I think that corner's Puon. I've forgotten the corner names for Belgium, or for Spa, rather. But, anyway, yeah. And the battle for the lead, and Nico Prossi... He kept the lead despite running right, uh, running wide out of the source. But Jean D'Ambrosio right round the outside of Nico Pross. He had much better speed. And D'Ambrosio has taken the lead of the Belgian e Prix, which is good from a championship perspective because, you know, Prost, he is a realistic championship contender. D'Ambrosio is right down the back of the driver's championship. And considering we've only got this race and two hours left to go, yeah, it really is time to focus on the championship standings a lot. Um, and which is why for me, I'd rather have D'Ambrosio at the front than Nico Prost. But anyway, coming into the source, we dive out the inside of Jacques Villeneuve. Villeneuve actually clips the back of us there. He runs out wide as a result because we kind of stopped him turning in, really. And actually, we've got the run on Nathaniel Burton as well. Yes, we have. So we're right up behind um, an E-Dams, you know, a, uh, an app. So actually, in real life, uh, yeah, we're right up behind the cars that are really quick in real life. And I believe that puts us in fifth place, I believe. And anyway, a battle for the lead once again. Nico Prost and Sean D'Ambrosio battling for the lead. D'Ambrosio's got track position, but Nico Prost, he has got the speed. He, he, yeah, he's diving out of the inside of Jerome D'Ambrosio, and he's done it. He's made that move stick easily, really. And yeah, Nico Prost, he's just going to drive off into the sunset unless, unless D'Ambrosio gets back past, which he might well do. And, you know, I thought I was in fifth. I'm actually in fourth, actually. Um, so, yeah, we're right up on Degrassi, D'Ambrosio, and... Um, and Prost, and coming around Puon, we're so much quicker around Puon than the AI. I mean, we're right up behind Degrassi, but he's being held up by D'Ambrosio. We could try and think of making a move, though, going into the next corner, and we do, but no, we left it a little bit too late. We clipped the back of Degrassi, trying to go around the outside, but we've lost the rear end, and we've spun around there. That's a team of Guri cars shoved us off there, and we're now stuck in the gravel. As you can see, we have got no rear wing. That would explain why we had no rear end grip trying to get past Degrassi and we've come from well fourth place to stone dead last so fantastic let's have a look at what actually happened so there's Antonio Felix da Costa who's directly behind us we try and make a move and I s we've seen so many accidents like that I mean Canada we saw loads of them where the AI just where the, the, you know the AI it's like they just forget to break it's like it's just a lazy glide into the back of the opponent it's I just, there's so many over, there's been so many crashes like that where the AI just don't bother to break and they use their rivals as a, as a, as a break, as a physical break. Anyway, yeah, Da Costa, he, not only did he lose our rear wing, look, he lifted us up into the air, he shoved us off into the gravel. He not only damaged our car, he also spun us off, he got us stuck in the gravel as well. We do get unstuck, uh, because we were only partially beached in the gravel, but, well, thanks Da Costa, really, um, but one thing I will say is we're coming into the pits now, um, it's stone dead last, but look, the race is nine laps long. The fuel was only meant to last five laps, which meant, you know, it should be 20 litres of fuel a lap. We've done two laps. We've used nowhere near 40 litres of fuel, which means we might well be able to do a one stop. So even though we crashed and we come into the pits on the second lap as opposed to the fifth lap, we should be able to do a one stop still, just about. I think if we crashed on the first lap, we would have had it, but... The fuel, it, I don't know, it said it could do five laps, but it, it can do way more than that. Um, it's almost like a repeat of Hockenheim. And what's that? That's John Eric Vern, who's just driving into the wall there. No idea what that's all about. All the other AI have been able to find their way into the pits, but it's John Eric Vern driving into the wall there. And actually, coming out of the pits, that is Jacques Villeneuve. And we got the run on Jacques Villeneuve. And yeah, fantastic stuff. So, we're, uh, well, we're in 10th place. Uh, Nico Pross is three seconds up the road, which means we're in the net second place. I mean, Villeneuve wasn't in second. He's made it some places through the pit stop, but Pross was leading the race, and we're right up behind him in track position. So that's great. So let's have a look what happened to Vern. So there's PK up ahead, who is drunk, and Vern just copies him. And PK just about makes it into the pits, but Vern can't. He tries to turn out going into the pits, and he's done what all really great AI and computer games do, and has just gone to the wall. And we've actually sped up this replay. So, you know, this is how long Vern was stuck here trying to get into the pit. So, you know, we speed it up, speed it up, speed it up. He's still turning right into the wall. And then suddenly, 
he teleported into the pits and is out. So the weird thing is, is that he's refueled, but his um his damage hasn't been fixed. He's got no front wing, so no idea what that was all about, really. Anyway, obviously we saw half the AI came into the pits. The other half of the field do need to. This is Sarazan making a move on Robin Fries. He hasn't quite done it, but no, they're going to come into the pits now. So you know, th you know, we we have to see where we come out because we're in tenth. Cover net second, but who knows? Fries may well come out ahead of us, and that's someone who hasn't come into the pit. That is Oliver Turvey. Oliver Turvey, I completely forgot he was even in Formula E. We haven't actually, his name has not been mentioned this series since the third episode. Since Hockenheim, his name has not been mentioned. But Oliver Turvey, maybe he's going to try and do a no stop. It'd be really tight. I don't think he can do it, but if he can do a no stop, that would be fantastic. Anyway, we're in 10th. And actually, Villeneuve trying to make a move on us. As you can see, the, the bus stop chicane, it was poor for us in qualifying. It's poor for us in the race. Luckily, La Source is really good for us. And we're going to try and outbreak him into La Source. Well, we haven't really outbroken him, but we've got the inside line. And, yep, we're up into third place. Actually, we've got, we've got out ahead of everyone else who we just got past in the pit. So, it's Oliver Turvey leading. Nico Prost second. Um, Sam Bird third. Jacques Villeneuve fourth. And D'Ambrosio fifth. Actually, D'Ambrosio lost a couple of places during the whole pit stop uh, malarkey here we are and we messed up the bus stop chicane once again Jacques Villeneuve he's breezed on past them he gets stuck on the curb there beached on the curb and D'Ambrosio's got past us and so has Nathaniel Burton so we're currently in sixth place well fifth actually because Oliver Turvey came into the pits he tried to do a no stop that didn't work so he's now well probably going to come out right at the back of the field we get past Nathaniel Burton and we try we've got the momentum on D'Ambrosio but he forces us out and we do get stuck on the curb ever so slightly. That loses us momentum. And, you know, going into Eau Rouge, surely we're not going to make the move round the outside of Eau Rouge. No, we back out of that. There was no way we were going to make that stick. That would have resulted in a hideous accident. But still, fourth place. And considering, you know, considering the accident we had with DaCosta, fourth place, hey, I'll happily take that. And this is skipping on a few laps later. There's John Eric Verne. He's in the back end of the points. He's in about eighth place. But he's got no front wing he was losing positions left right and center he's just lost one to i believe that's simona di silvestro or maybe it was Freins, who knows um but yeah he verne's coming to the pit so he's the only driver really to do a two stop so yeah verne his race is uh destroyed uh because i don't know because he just didn't he didn't he didn't decide whether he wanted to come into the pits he was thinking should i cut the corner should i come into the pits he was really t you know taking a sweet time over making that decision but anyway uh, yeah, skipping a few laps later, and yeah, we, we're we still thinking about uh, making the move on D'Ambrosio. I mean, we've been right up behind him. As you can see, Villeneuve's long gone. Uh, so is Nico Prost. We do finally get past D'Ambrosio. Uh, we finally were able to find an opportunity. But look, Villeneuve's three seconds ahead. Nico Prost is eight seconds ahead. So I think that's it. I think third place is the best we can hope for. As you can see, Villeneuve is now five seconds ahead. So we're not going to catch up to him. And we still got Dan Broza right up behind us. Nathaniel Burton as well. What's that? We've lost the rear end again. We've kept it. We're still holding third place. But we've lost the rear wing once again. Sliding through these corners. And we're just getting hit constantly on the rear end. Who on earth is doing that to us? Who on earth is sabotaging our race? They've knocked, us our, they've knocked off our rear wing. And they keep shoving us. That's Jerome D'Ambrosio. Oh, cheers. Cheers, Jerome. You're not even a championship rival. So what is the point? He tried to make an overtake. I think he tried to get past us. But he 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 wasn't close enough. And he decided way too late to make the move. If, you, if you're if you going to make that move, you've got to commit to it much, much earlier. I mean, look, he was quite a bit behind us. Then suddenly decided, oh, wait, I'll go for the move. I'm taking the racing line. Jerome, if you want to make the move, commit to it much earlier. And make sure you're at least closer to me. I mean, come on. And... Well, cheers, Jerome. I mean, luckily, we've only got one and a half laps left to go. So we're going to try to... We're going to have to nurse the car for one and a half laps. But look at the train we're holding up. Jerome with no front wing. And look at these other people. I've got no rear wing. How am I supposed to compete? Well, how am I supposed to complete one and a half laps? And in fact, we're not going to. Because we have spun out in front of all of those people. I'm amazed we didn't take anyone out. We try and rejoin the track quite dangerously, actually. You know, that's... Uh, that's um that's both a Amlin Andretti and a Dragon car, which we had to force out into the grass there. Really dangerous for rejoining the track. And as you can see, Nathaniel Burton, there's us up ahead. And as you can see, just no rear end grip. I and mean, we got no aerodynamic grip, really. 
And, you know, cheers for that, Jerome. And Burton, what on earth has he done? Well, Burton, cheers for the revenge, mate. Cheers for Geg. You know, cheers for... I don't know. He's, I don't know. It's really nice of him to do that for me. But I don't know why he sacrificed his own race to get my revenge. I don't know. Anyway, well, cheers, Burton. Um, that was really nice of you. Anyway, and Jerome D'Ambrosio, he's now got no front wing or rear wing. He's got to nurse his car into the pits. Apart from the fact an Edams has gone straight into the back of him. That is Sebastian Buemi, who has gone right into the back of D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio's got three wheels. He's going to try and get into the pits, but no, he, his car just will not do it. Not with three wheels on his car. Now, what happens to Buemi? Buemi... Hmm, I don't know, kind of a lack of spatial awareness from both D'Ambrosio and Buemi, really. And Buemi with three wheels, don't know really what he's going to try and achieve. Now, just go around really slowly on the racing line. I don't really quite know what his achievement is. And uh, as you can see, I get past, and there's been another accident involving Oliver Turvey. His name had not been mentioned since the third episode, and now his name has been mentioned twice for two quite big reasons. First for his well, attempt at a no-stop strategy, and now... He's gone to the back of Buemi. So let's have a look at this. So Oliver Turvey, just minding his own business. Obviously, he's being held up by me at this point. And he can see Buemi, he can see Buemi, he can see Buemi. So why doesn't he break, turn out of it? He can see Buemi miles before. So why did he carry on accelerating into him? I mean, Oliver Turvey, I love you, but that was stupid. But anyway, well, that was uh, that was very interesting. And that, because of all those accidents with D'Ambrosio Buemi and that... We're still in a points position, ninth place, coming around Poo one with half a lap to go, and we've lost it once again. Poo one which was an amazing corner for us for making overtakes, but no, we've lost it. We're in 11th place, but 11th place, that's all right. Both Mahindras have got past us, but, you know, if one car retires, if there's a crash, if there's an engine failure, if there's, I don't know, some kind of weird thing that happens, because it's our factor, something might well happen, we can snatch a point. We just need a crash to happen in the last half a lap, but we've lost it again, and we... Just keep it out of the wall. Daniel Laps has now got past us. We're in 12th place. Now we need two people to retire in, you know, a third of a lap. I, I just don't think that's really going to happen anymore. Especially as Nico Prost, he's come through the bus stop chicane. Villeneuve was catching up to Nico Prost, but Villeneuve just not quite catching up enough. And Nico Prost is going to win the 2016 Belgian E Prix at Spa. Fantastic from Nico Prost. Start to finish, he dominated, really. I mean, a bit of a threat from. D'Ambrosio, but you know, he fended it off. Villeneuve very quick, couldn't quite catch up. And Lucas Degrassi, out of nowhere, going to take third place. Thanks to me crashing out, D'Ambrosio crashing out, Lucas Degrassi been able to take third place. So, you know, fantastic stuff from all of the top three, all very deserving of their positions. And this is Nick Heifeld, who snatched ninth place from us. Let's just see him take ninth place. And bear in mind, Nick Heifeld is right at the back end of the Drivers' Championship. He's two points will do wonders for him, but his engine is gone! He is metres away. He can see the start-finish line. He could literally get out. He could hop to the start-finish line. But his engine has gone feet away from the finishing line. How cruel is that? That is... That is brutal. His engine goes seconds away from finishing the race. And he would have got two points for that. Which, bearing in mind his position in the Drivers' Championship, would have done wonders to Nick Heifeld. We come round. We're going to try and snatch 11th place. Uh, going around Blanchemont, I believe this is, and no, no, the car just can't do it. We've lost our rear right wheel, and cheers to Costa, but more importantly, thank you, Jerome D'Ambrosio, for completely ruining my race. Villeneuve takes the fastest lap, no surprise, considering how quick he was at the end of the race. Um, what can I say, really? What can I say? Just, Jerome D'Ambrosio, thanks a lot. And I do like Jerome D'Ambrosio, honestly, in real life, but no, this race... <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. Nico Prost won, Villeneuve second. Nelson Piquet, a championship rival in fourth. And considering he started 14th, this is a good performance from him, but yeah, quite worrying, actually. Uh, Vern finished, well, back end of the finishers, really. Um, so I have no idea what this has done to the Drivers' Championship, but, well, let's have a look. I mean, Nico Prost leading the Drivers' Championship, which isn't too surprising, because he's done very well recently. Um, he's actually overtaken Sam Bird, three points ahead of me there. And Jack Villeneuve, if you go back, if you rewind back a couple of races, Villeneuve was in about 11th in the Drivers' Championship. He now finds himself in third and as a genuine championship contender. PK, you know, he's right up there. You know, he didn't quite overtake me this race, but, you know, he did get some good points on me. So, you know, PK fourth, Sarazan fifth, Duval sixth, and Verne seventh. I mean, 
realistically, I mean, there's still a lot of people who could take the driver's championship. The team's championship, and it's getting interesting, really. It's certainly a three-way battle between Virgin, Edams, and interestingly, Venturi. I mean, again, you rewind back a few episodes, and it looked like it was going to be between us and Edams. Venturi, they've come from behind, scored a ton of points, obviously got a 1-2 in Monaco, and Villeneuve obviously got second and the fastest lap this race, and Venturi, they are right back in it. They're leading the team's championship. Whether they can hold that until the end of the season, I don't know. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and next time, it's the race everybody's been looking forward to. When I announced this series, loads of people said, I can't wait for Nürburgring, I can't wait for Nürburgring, I'm really looking forward to the Nürburgring. It's coming next week, the next race in the championship, the second to the last race, is the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife. That's going to be a very interesting race. Damage limitation, I think, but, you know, who knows? I haven't recorded the episode yet, so, you know, maybe I'll do amazingly, but... I wouldn't put money on it. So yeah, anyway guys, I'll see you next time for that race, which I know you guys have really been looking forward to. So I'll see you then.